So now I have my uh, beautiful customer service ready to run and I want to start moving stuff from the UI and down the layers. And first lesson here, we're just going to move from the UI to the business logic layer. So we're still going to use um, some anti-patterns, but we'll change those into some proper patterns later on. So for now, I'll just move all the logic of working with the database from the actual program and down the layer to the business logic layer. So I'll grab everything that has to do with CROT in the database and move it down here first into the service for customer. That's kind of the goal. And this lesson will just do the create. Now right away I found an issue because I want to kind of use my fake database here. If I look at the code, let me just show you the code in the program file how we actually create a customer. So this is the add customer code that we have in the UI. When I scroll down you'll see here is the customers.add and notice I have access here to customers, right? I have the fake database available for me. So the one we built earlier, the fake database, if that is not around, remember to do a control dot and you'll have to take the import right here for the data access layer, right? So with the fake database, I don't have access to the customers. And that's of course an error because I need to get access to my customers table in the fake database. So I'll open the fake database and here's actually the problem. I forgot to make these guys public. So you have to remember that if I do not put anything in front of it, they won't be public available. So I won't be able to access them from the outside. One more thing I, I think we should do is make the ID capitalized because it's actually a static thing right now and also the customers needs to be capitalized. Right now we're using the fake database, later we'll switch it with a real database. But we still we st should still think in the mind of actually making a database. Okay, getting back here to the customer service, now I actually have access to my customers. Good. Now what else did I do actually in the program? Let me just, actually let me just grab the code and copy it here so we can just see it inside our customer service. So to add a customer we also kind of created a new customer right here and we used the add function from the customer. So let's just grab this actually because now we have a list available. That's the customers from the fake database, right? We can do an add on that list and then we can add the new customer. Now the ID is not available. Now the ID needs to be, right now in the old version that was actually managed in the UI, but now the ID of course needs to be managed in the database. So if I go back to my fake DB, I actually also copied the ID field down here. So now we can actually do fake DB dot ID and then just add plus plus there. And now we have the ID available as well for creating a customer. The first name, the last name and the address. Well, honestly, we could just have added the customer directly from here, but I'm going to try and explain later on why I actually want instead just to duplicate the values or not duplicate, move them from the old cost or the customer from the UI and actually just move them as copies into the new area right here. There we go. So notice I'm just moving the information from this cost object directly into the new customer object. I'm still getting an error here because I need to of course return the customer I just created. If this was a database creation, it would make sense to return the customer because now he would actually also have been from the database would have been populated with an ID. So I'm going to return the customer now and I do that by making a new customer here, just call him new cost. That's the new customer I want. And then it's something you might not have seen yet, but I can actually inside the add method here directly assign this customer. I just want to show you guys that. So notice the line right here actually just says assign the customer to this variable and when that is done, send the customer to the list. I hope that makes uh, good sense for you. And then the last thing, I, I want to return the customer that I just created like this. So return new cost. There we go. Now we have actually created a create function and next lesson we can try and test it. See you next time.